Pounter earnings are out, and Rishi from RBC, the Ultra Bear, sticks to his guns that Pounter is a $5 stock. But on the other end, we've got a price target increase from Citibank, all while Pounter continues to fall as of this recording, opening lower in the pre-market trading today. So starting with Citi first, note they actually raised their price target twice in two days, from $20 to $23 right before earnings on Monday. But then after the results were out, they raised it another $2 from $23 to $25. But note, they kept their neutral rating on the stock for obvious reasons that we'll cover. But the main positive reasons they wanted to raise their price target was around customer growth and their commercial deals continuing to grow. This was highly emphasized by management on the earnings call, now, for some slight concerns, though, they did note the weak collections and billing growth, as well as the slight downturn in operating cash flow. So not necessarily bad performance, but something to watch out for that I've also pointed out in my earnings summary video posted late last night. So check that out if you haven't had the chance. So for those reasons, Citi kept their rating neutral, which is really driven by Pounds' current price and valuation. They consider their sales ratio very high, which we all know traditionally is, and has a lot of growth price in, in comparison to their current numbers. So Citi even thought raising their price target has commented that they are in a wait and see mode to see if Palantir can actually keep growing sustainably and then successfully monetize AIP before considering a rating change. And Carp admitted this himself during the earnings call that they're great at teaching at the boot camps and being educators on how to use AIP and deploying AI at an enterprise, but not necessarily the best sales closers for the events and still figuring it out. Then we've got Rishi from RBC Capital, the ultra bear in the stock like I noted. So he revealed in his win with the price dropping after hours and looks to be continuing on today in the pre-market. So he continues to call Pounder an overhyped company, a beneficiary for AI, which shouldn't be there, he said. He notes on US commercial decelerating 70% to 40%. So he notes in comparison, it's obviously a harder number to beat when you have higher baselines with basic math. But fundamentally, he says actual technologists in AI that he's talked to at least are skeptical around AI and AIP, and that's at least the ones that he noted though. Now, when asked about boot camps, he said it is a smart strategy, but still is very skeptical, about, especially about its scalability, and notes it is a heavy custom software still, and still essentially is calling them a service-based consulting business rather than SaaS. And fairly though, he does point out it still takes time to bring up customers to speed and eventually to sign on compared to other SaaS companies where you know you just turn it on. Now, when asked about his price target and the disconnect of its current valuation today, he said it's all perception and the value of AIP, then points out the metrics that we all already know that they're expensive, so nothing new here, and says their messaging around AIP and boot camps is deliberately targeting retail investors to overhype the stock and prop up the price where it is today, hence why it's not $5 where he targets it, and then pitches that Microsoft is doing a lot more when it comes to generative AI, and basically just sees Palantir thriving off government business as a higher quality business for them personally, but governments are trying to reduce Palantir, which we've seen talks about and conceding that yes, vendor lock-in is an issue and not the goal of course and can affect Pounder, so we'll see how low it can go for Rishi's sake. And then in other news, Pounder will be at the SCSP AX Expo out in DC for the next two days. They've got a packed schedule for many speakers, lots of engineers of course, but also Dr. Carp, but a lot more names that we don't typically see on their busy schedule as the top sponsor of the event. So I'll keep an eye out for these talks to come out, maybe on video, but let me know your thoughts below and I'll see you in the next video.